وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين. And we have not sent you a messenger of Allah for any other reason except to be a mercy to the whole world. The Prophet ﷺ, once he saw an old woman, and you might know this story. He didn't ask about her religion or what she followed or where she came from. That's, this, this is not important to the Muslims. Because when you are sincere, it doesn't matter what color you are, what nationality you are, what uh, status you come from, what religion you are. Good service is good service. So Prophet ﷺ saw this old woman, she had no one beside her to help and she was trying to lift some luggage up onto her satchel, onto her camel and trying to go home. When the Prophet ﷺ saw her, he immediately raced to help her. He carried them on top and helped her and dragged the camel along and helped the old woman and kept her company all the way until she reached her home, put her luggage down, made her comfortable and made sure that everything has been given to her. So then she looked at him and said to him, Oh young man, your face is full of light and your words are full of comfort. You bring softness to my heart and you are one of the best people I've ever met. I thank you for this company, how can I ever repay you? The only thing I have is not wealth or money or possessions, but I have an advice for you. In those days, advices used to be bought for the price of camels in those days, like a price of car today. So he said, yes, advise me. Prophet used to accept advices from old women. So he said to him, she said to him, there is a man, his name is Muhammad, and he's a very bad man. He has disunited the people and disunited us from our family. He teaches people sorcery and he leads them astray from the ancestral belief. Keep away from him. I don't want you to be destroyed. You are too, too good of a man. <laughs> so then, Wallahi, this is a true story, ya akhwan. True story. And she said, that, then finally she asked him for his name. And the Prophet is patient and calm. What would one of us do? He turned around and smiled and said, My name is Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. <gasps> she said, Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She could not do anything except sit down on her knees and say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa annaka rasulullah I bear witness that there is only one God and you are his messenger He had a Jewish neighbor and the Prophet ﷺ used to experience some harm from him so he used to place his rubbish in front of the Prophet's house very frequently and the Prophet peace be upon him used to clean it up One day or a few days passed one time there was no rubbish in front of the Prophet's house, so the Prophet peace be upon him understood that something's wrong with his neighbor. And Jibreel alayhi salam had told him to be dutiful to the neighbor to the point where the Prophet thought that Jibreel is about to tell him, and when you die, your neighbor has to take everything you have. The Prophet went and visited the Jewish man and he found him sick. The Jewish man asked, How did you know I was harmed? How did you know I was sick? The Prophet said to him, Well, the only way I knew is because of your rubbish. <laughs> That Jewish neighbor became a Muslim. What about the Bedouin man who entered the masjid one time when the Prophet was sitting, the companions were around him. He felt like going to the toilet to the Bedouin, a rude man, and he doesn't understand. He went to one of the corners of the masjid and started to urinate. Just went to the corner and just began urinating in the middle of the, in the masjid. Well, the companions were still not ready for that. They took out their swords. <laughs> the Prophet said, La, da'uhu. No, 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 let him finish. <laughs> Wallah, he said, let him finish, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the man finished, he said, bring some water and clean it up. And he called the man aside. And he addressed him with such a kind manner that this Bedouin has never heard it from even his mother ever. How compassionate is the mother? He never even heard it from his mother. Finally, the Prophet said to him, and I can't describe the way he said it, he said, it is normal for a human being to need to urinate. But this place has not been set for such an act. The Bedouin looked up to him and cried. The Bedouin doesn't cry, hardly cries, and said to him, Bi Abi Anta wa Ummi Ya Rasulullah. I sacrifice everything I have for you before my mother and father and messenger of God. Or that woman who came to Prophet and said, Ya Rasulullah, I am pregnant from zina. Stone me. Subhanallah. He turned away from her the first time. Maybe she's drunk. Maybe she's ignorant. Giving her a chance to go away and repent to Allah in another way. So she returned back to him. Ya Rasulullah, I'm a pregnant woman from zina. Tahir me, purify me. Stone me to death. The Prophet turned again away from her. Trying to ignore her the third time. 
And then a fourth time, when she bared witness four times against herself and insisted, he said to her, Go back until you give birth to the baby that's in your stomach. What has he done? Why should he die with you? So she returned, and in the hope, Prophet is hoping that she will not return and ask Allah to pardon her and forgive her because Allah is merciful. And to hide it. Nine months later she returned, Ya Akhwan. And she said to him, He is my child, now purify me. The Prophet looked and said, Go back until the child has been, until the child no longer needs your breast milk. He needs your breast milk. So she left and after two years, so about two years and nine months, she returned back to the Prophet When the Prophet saw that she was insistive on it and she wanted the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they took her and she was stoned. And then the people, they thought, like they, they felt like she's a bad woman. When the Prophet saw this attitude, he stood up before everybody and made a legacy for her which lasts till today until the last hour. He said, Wallahi, laqad tabat hadihi al-mar'atu tawbatan law zana ahlu al-madina tila wasi'atum. Wallahi, this woman has repented such a repentance that if all the people of Medina were to commit the same zina and you were to place it on the scale, her repentance would have overcome them all. Not one of them will equal her. One time, they were out towards a battle. Suddenly the Prophet stopped the whole army. And he said, there is a bird above me fluttering. Why is the bird fluttering above you, Ya Rasulullah? He said, she is crying because someone has taken her babies from its nest. Who took them? And a young man came along and said, Ya Rasulullah, I did. The Prophet said, why? Why do you want to hurt the feelings of this mother by taking her children? Return them back. In fact, the Prophet used to say, anyone who, ha who kills a bird for no reason, on the day of judgment it will come to Allah crying and saying, my Lord, your servant so-and-so killed me and had no reason for killing me. لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولٌ مِّنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُّمْ حَرِيصٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ رَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ Which means, there has certainly come to you a messenger from among yourselves, grievous and hurtful to him, it is when you suffer.